grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's sermon is meant to better equip you to discern between what is true and what is false. Sometimes that's easy to do. Other times, it's a challenge. But we who follow the historic lectionary, we are annually reminded of the difference between good fruit and bad. So let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Our Bible readings this morning contain quite a number of visuals. There's God's Word being like a hammer that breaks rocks into pieces. There's fierce wolves who speak twisted things, as well as wolves in sheep's clothing. There are grapes, there's thorn bushes, there's figs, there's thistles, there's healthy trees bearing good fruit, there's diseased trees bearing bad. All of it, of course, inspired by God the Holy Spirit for you to know the difference when it comes to heresy, heterodoxy, and orthodoxy, and what to do about it. That which is orthodox is straight, it's correct, it's true. It's what we all want to believe, teach, and confess. It's what we want to build our lives upon and carry to our graves. That which is heresy, though, isn't merely twisted, it's broken. It's worthless, even. No matter how influential or zealous the person peddling it may be, no matter how good his hair looks or how white his teeth are, Joel Osteen, we recognize it for what it is and we simply say, no, thank you. But then, what's heterodox, and it's close to the truth, but it's still wrong. It's still false. And that is bad fruit. Fruit from the heterodox, fruit from the heresy, both bad. No bueno. Now my assumption is most of us don't buy into a lot of heresy. Heresy like the Mormons, what they peddle, or the Jehovah's Witnesses, who use the name of Jesus but then refine his history. They twist his gospel into a, a gospel of works, righteousness, and then, of course, add their own plethora of prophecies to Jesus' teachings. And though there is much to be said about heresy, how it just never goes away, it just keeps, keeps getting repackaged and redefined and then promoted year after year after year as being something new. You can polish a turd all you want, but you still have a turd. So my concern this morning is those who believe what is heterodox. It's all the teaching, all the doctrine, that's close to being straight, but it's not. I hear it all the time on music that's played on the Christian radio stations. Folks, you must be weary. You must be warned as to what is playing. I know it's upbeat. I know it's uplifting. I know it's got a catchy tune. But there's heterodox teaching in a lot of that music. You see it everywhere on Facebook. You hear heterodox teachings from your friends. You even think it yourselves. We are bombarded with heterodox, bent and crooked beliefs. And even though our Lord says, beware of this, we think it's okay. It's all right. Locks are on our doors, security systems are in place, but we leave our ears wide open for anyone to enter in and to spew their heterodox teachings. I mean, you wouldn't add on to your house with a bow two by four. 
Not to mention use one for your decking. Get that. We are more careful picking out straight lumber for our construction projects than we are in analyzing, examining, and comparing to see if what is being taught is orthodox or not. Listen, my daddy was a carpenter. I spent many a Saturday going to Lumber 84 and seeing if that board was bowed or not. By the way, I should say, this is why our liturgy is so important. What do we recite before the sermon? Now, you may have grown up in a church where uh, this was recited after the sermon, but, but it doesn't matter. What do we recite? We recite one of the three ecumenical creeds, Apostles, Nicene, or the Athanasian, one time a year. These creeds are orthodox. They are as straight as an arrow, as orthodox as they come. And those are recited before the sermon, most likely, so that if the preacher then gets in the pulpit and preaches something different, you will know. And when the preacher preaches something different than what those creeds confess, be kind, approach him, Point out the error, and if he doesn't repent, you run him out of town. Some say, come on, pastor, heterodox teaching isn't going to hurt me. Really? Boy, the prophets and the apostles and Jesus all beg to differ with you. For you see, neither heresy nor heterodoxy is good for you. It's not good for your family. It's not good for your faith. It's not good for your soul. Actually, it's one of the most dangerous things known to mankind. For it is the devil's attempt, either slowly or all at once, to pull you away from the truth to dislodge the cross from your heart, stuffing your ears with whatever it is so that you don't hear the gospel and you're cut off from the Lord's forgiveness. Unfortunately, heterodoxy does not come with a warning label. What if above certain churches, even ones here in town, there was a sign that read, Warning! What is preached here is bent it's crooked. Listen at your own peril. That would be extremely helpful, would it not? But as you know, it doesn't exist. And even if it did, it wouldn't stop some people from going in there and listening to that blather. To make matters worse, heretical and heterodox teachers, they are not easy to spot. They carry the same Bible that you do. They quote the same Bible passages left and right. They pray the most beautiful prayers, and there's such a joy to be around. They believe in Jesus, for crying out loud. But they tell you what your itching ears want to hear, and your old Adam just laps it up like it's a puddle of antifreeze. Some say, but pastor, doesn't Jesus tell us not to judge? He does! But that is not a blanket statement prohibiting every form of judgment. What Jesus says in Matthew 7, 1 has nothing to do with paying attention to what is taught and seeing if it is orthodox. For 15 verses later, our Lord says, judge. He says, beware. Be critical and discerning about what is taught because on this side of heaven... We have to listen and think critically. I mean, look, just an argument from history. When the Pope and his adherents were leading Christians astray with their false teaching, Luther didn't just sit back, do nothing, and say, all that matters is that we love one another. No! He did something about it. He identified the heretical and the heterodox teachings in the churches and the things that were orthodox, what did he do with those? Left them alone. They're straight already. No need to change anything. 
And gang, believe me, I know what makes discernment even more difficult is that we all have friends. We all have family members who do not believe as we do. I mean, in the new heavens and the new earth, we'll all be Lutheran. Everybody. But not yet. These people that I'm speaking of, they care for us. They pray for us. They are bound, though, to a heterodox or even a heretical teaching. I cannot count the number of friends and acquaintances that I have lost when I abandoned my own heterodox beliefs. Gratefully, though, my mother still loves me, even though she's not Lutheran, not yet. So how do we critique? How do we judge? We can't see into another person's heart, so there's got to be some way to check things out. Well, there is. Jesus says, by their fruits you will know them. Now, those fruits can include a preacher or a teacher's life, how he behaves, his deeds, etc. However, even thoroughly orthodox preachers, they have what? They've got to deal with that old Adam. They have a sinful flesh, and they won't always do the good that they want to do. So judging a man by his life and his good works, that's secondary. The main fruit of any preacher is his doctrine teaching. And this is why Jesus asks, do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Now, I've got to believe, now, I could be wrong about this, I've got to believe Jesus' audience cracked up at that. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? The answer is what? No! Jesus continues, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. So the fruit will be the judge. And we have to examine it carefully on all sides to see if it's good or if it's bad. Now thankfully, God has not left us unequipped in this matter. He has put His whole word at our fingertips to study and to learn. He has given us the whole book of Concord as a faithful guide. He's given you Bible classes as well as the divine service, all to learn how to examine the fruit, to see through any lies, any deceptions, any inconsistencies, any falsehoods, anything that then passes for Christian teaching. You might think Jesus would say, don't listen to anybody. Don't worry about preachers and teachers. Don't worry about finding a church. Just stay home with your Bible, sit in your easy chair, in your corner, and you'll be safe. But that's silly. Because he never said anything like that. On the contrary, he has sent true preachers who bring forth good fruit, and they do it all for you. That being the teaching of the Scriptures where law and gospel is rightly divided. The good fruit is the teaching of repentance, the preaching of the law that breaks the rock into pieces as we just heard. The law which brings us to contrition and the end of ourselves, to the knowledge that we can do nothing to save ourselves. As we just confessed in the confession, and then the preaching of the gospel, the sweet gospel that brings forth faith. The good fruit is the preaching of Jesus who won the forgiveness of our sins by the death, His death on the cross. Folks, fruit like this gives all glory to God and all comfort to you. For they are the words that Jesus wants you to hear. If the words of the false teacher, the false preacher, are poison, the words of the Lord are medicine. The medicine of immortality. If the words of the false teacher bring forth death, then the words of the Lord bring forth what? Life and salvation. And 
where you find the gospel, purely taught, and the sacraments, rightly administered. There you know the preacher is a good tree bringing you good fruit, and there you should remain. And even tell others, I found good fruit, come with me. Yet, where you find teachings that differ from this or practices to the contrary, any time you find bad fruit, from there you should flee. Had a Lutheran pastor friend of mine uh, in Greensboro who started a little community garden. I think a lot of people were pretty excited about the idea. It was there in a, a black neighborhood and uh, uh, they were pretty excited, but uh, my preacher friend found to be the only one on Saturday going up there to work in the garden after a while. People kind of lost interest, and the little tomato, great tomatoes were growing. And I was standing out there with him. He's out there in his clerical, and he's uh, cleaning some weeds and picking some great uh, 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 tomatoes. And um, uh, the little, uh, two little black girls walked by, and one of them said, What's that? And he said, it's a little tomato. Would you like to try one? And she took it into her mouth. She, she ate it. She spit it out. She said, that's nasty. Folks, that's the way we should be about bad fruit when we hear it. Spit it out and say, that's nasty. Instead of just hoarding it all in. So don't settle for, it's bent, but it's close enough. And don't settle for anything twisted. That's all nasty. It's bad fruit. And it's what the Lord never intended you to have. So may the Lord keep us all steadfast in this. His word of life until He calls us unto Himself. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise for prayer.